The challenge started in 2010 with just three competitions. Here we are in 2013 with upwards of 20 competitions. They cover a much broader spectrum of the sort of skills that are needed in the cybersecurity profession. We are engaging with schools, we're engaging with universities, and I would expect to do more of all of those things in the coming years. From a farming family, and um, while we were waiting for the, uh, the sheep to have their babies around this time of year, um, we had to sit up all night and um, check they were okay every 15 minutes or so. So uh, my dad got a caravan, which we parked outside the, uh, the sheep shed, and um, we sat in there with an old Atari ST and uh, I broke it and I fixed it and I played games on it and uh, was messing about with that and I can trace my interest in computing back to that. From a very young age uh, I've been interested in computers and information technology and I suppose security is the, the cool end of computers information technology so it's something I've been drawn to. You can get a monkey to write a, a program but then to write a programme securely is an entirely different issue. I've just finished the competition, um, don't really know how it went, it was a little bit harder than I was expecting, uh, but quite a few of the people that I've spoken to found it a little bit difficult, so hopefully it'll go all right. It's actually quite scary, the things that criminals can now do that they couldn't two or three years ago. We're connecting more and more of our physical lives to the digital world, increasingly things like power, infrastructure, banking, absolutely everything. And of course, as we do that, the cyber criminals can access that infrastructure and command more power. I think over the last two to three years, the nature of the cyber threat we faced has fundamentally shifted. A huge, huge increase in the volume of malicious code that we see every day. 250,000 new samples of malware and many instances of nation states getting involved in hacking as well. The challenge is funded by government and by private sponsorship, academia and big corporations. And one of the things that really inspires our contestants is the number of household names that support us. And it's those big household names that write our competitions and challenges. And they're also present at those competitions and challenges. And that means our con contestants can meet effectively prospective employers. So there are all kinds of skills that could get you into a career in cybersecurity. You might be someone that enjoys networking or building your own computers or perhaps even playing video games. But it's not just technical skills that are important. There's a key trait that you identify in people that tend to excel in cybersecurity. And that's curiosity, interest and intrigue. People that like to figure out how things work. And there are lots of those people out there. The key is we need to go and find them and inspire them. It's, it's kind of insane, isn't it, that we have all these fairly well-paid jobs that are fascinating and they're in huge demand and we can't find the right people. I, I think one of the biggest reasons for that is the people we're looking for don't know that they're good. They don't know they have the skills that we need. So the cybersecurity challenge enables us to find that hidden talent, make them aware of the potential they have and get them into relevant jobs. The government has recognised that there is an issue and is now putting in place the right sorts of teaching in schools to bring people forward into this profession. And of course, as the challenge, we can supplement and help this process by getting schools involved in our schools competitions. The UK's really missed a trick in the last generation by leaving computer science off the curriculum and not teaching it properly. That's why we've developed this programme. In September, when schools download the pack, the teachers can deliver a lesson on cyber at code breaking. The students learn how to crack codes, they then learn how to write their own codes. Once they've done that, we'll make all of their codes available to the wider registered school community and they can have a go at cracking each other's. We'll run a leaderboard so we can see who's coming out on top. Early in 2014, we'll run an actual live final where the best schools can come and compete against each other. And through that process, we'll identify the cybersecurity schools champion. We'll be bringing on key stage four secondary school students who've got the skill and ability to be able to work to protect the UK online in the future. I've been in this profession for 15 years and I know how much hidden talent there is out there. And right now it's being wasted. We desperately need to do something to bring that hidden talent into the cybersecurity profession. <laughs>